Ubisoft is an extremely successful video game developer and publisher with studios all across the world. In fact, when it was first launched, Ubisoft stood for Ubiquitous Software. The company has gone through many changes since it first started, but today I want to talk about how in 2014 Ubisoft went from having a terrible reputation. Then, in the course of just five years, they fought off a hostile takeover in which they nearly lost everything to now being one of the best AAA third-party publishers of video games in the world. This video is the rise, the fall, and the rise again of Ubisoft. Founded by five French brothers, the Guillemot, whose father owned a supply business for farmers in the French countryside. All of the brothers did various jobs for the company before heading out to university to study business. By the time they had returned from college, the farming business was starting to wane, so they decided to diversify and got into selling software. They started off with CD audio media, but eventually noticed that video games were starting to become an exciting market. So they started their own developing and producing company called Ubisoft in 1986. While profitable, they didn't have any major breakout success until 1995 when they released the original Rayman, which received critical acclaim and financial success notably becoming the highest selling PlayStation game of all time in the UK, according to Eurogamer. There's a reason why people remember Rayman as something other than a title that you stick at the start of a Rabbids game. Using this momentum from Rayman, Ubisoft raised over $80 million and opened four new studios in just three years. The biggest issue they were still having was how to break into the United States video game market. At the time, their titles were selling great in Europe, but Americans hadn't come around to Rayman yet. With the spread of the internet in the 90s, they started licensing out their intellectual properties to companies making free-to-play titles. Yeah, way back in the 90s. And this increased the company's value by five times. Next, they bought a tiny studio in North Carolina called Red Storm Entertainment who had just recently developed a tiny little game called Rainbow Six. Purchasing Redstorm, which was co-founded by Tom Clancy himself, gave Ubisoft the rights to the Tom Clancy franchise moving forward, which became massively popular in the United States. Finally, it seemed Ubisoft had cracked the American video games market. Things were on the up and up for Ubisoft, and while I could talk about the next decade for them, I'd like to skip to the year 2014. Now, I'm not sure if everyone remembers this, but back in 2014, it was in vogue to shit on Ubisoft. In fact, Forbes published an article titled, Congratulations Ubisoft, You're the New EA. Now, I know Forbes isn't exactly known for their high-tier video games journalism, but this sentiment was echoed by gamers at large. Let's just briefly go over some of the unpopular things that Ubisoft was doing at the time. First off, Assassin's Creed Fatigue. They released nine mainline Assassin's Creed games in just eight years. I'm talking Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Revelations, Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Road, Assassin's Creed Unity, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. <sighs> All released within 2007 and 2015. And in particular, Assassin's Creed Unity was a huge stain on the company's reputation, particularly because of the unloaded face bug which was all over the internet at the time. Number 2. Watch Dogs Fail to Deliver When this game was announced, it looked incredible. The graphics looked top-notch, the world seemed interesting. At the time, hacking and cyber-terrorism were intriguing topics. But at release, the graphics had clearly been scaled back, and the game's antagonist was unlikable. So why the fuck are you here? Is there a target here? You really want to know? Fuck you. And the game as a whole fell flat. And number three, lack of dedicated servers for their multiplayer titles. Not everybody remembers the dark days when both Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor didn't have their own dedicated servers. My 
But I do want to take a moment here to praise Ubisoft, because not only have they fixed the server issues, they've also continued to support Rainbow Six Siege, and now, four years after its launch, they have kept an extremely dedicated fan base, and as of writing this, the concurrent player base is sitting just above 90,000 people. But that is now, and this was then. I want to talk about how in 2015, Ubisoft was in serious trouble. At the time, Vivendi, a French media conglomerate who you may not have heard of, but they do have their hands in some major companies that you probably have heard of, including Daily Motion, where everybody watches the illegally reposted episodes of Steven Universe, and they also own the entirety of the Universal Music Group. Yes, that Universal Music Group. Considered one of the big three of record labels. But back to Ubisoft. In 2015, Vivendi started buying a ton of shares in Ubisoft. At the time, Yves Guillemont, one of the original founders and current CEO of Ubisoft, called the move unwelcome. And in 2016, Vivendi had purchased up to 30% of the shares in a mobile game company called Gameloft, which was also owned by the Guillemont brothers. If you aren't aware who Gameloft is, don't worry, I didn't know who they were before I started doing my own research for this video, but they have their own Wikipedia page just for the games that they've developed and produced, and that list is long. Under French law, if you own more than a 30% stake in a company, then you're allowed to make what is called a public tender offer. This means that you can call up the other owners of stock in the company and offer to buy their shares at a little above market value. And by June of 2016, Vivendi had completed its hostile takeover of Gameloft and set its eyes to Ubisoft. The Gameloft brothers knew this and they started working quickly to fend off this hostile takeover, increasing their voting share on the company's board to 20%. But by September of 2016, Vivendi had already increased their share of the stock to 23%, and a request was put in to place Vivendi representatives on the board considering how much of the company they now owned. But Yves Guillemot strongly argued against this, saying that Vivendi should be seen as a competitor and not as an ally. And at the time, his speech worked. He was able to sway enough members of the board to deny this request. But this small-term victory didn't stop Vivendi who continued to buy shares and were closing in on the necessary 30% mark to make the public tender offer on the rest of the company. In just a few short months, between September to December of 2016, Vivendi went from owning 23% to owning 27.15%. In another twist from the law, once a share is owned for two years, it is granted double voting power, which was about to happen on some of Vivendi's shares, putting them over the 30% level. Reuters even reported that Vivendi's takeover of Ubisoft was likely to happen by the end of 2017. Also, after doing this research for just an hour on Wikipedia, I'd like to announce that I have a degree in law. In France. In French law. <laughs> the Guillemot family were trying to buy back as much of the stock as they could to prevent Vivendi from getting to it first. And in October, they announced a deal with an investment services provider to help them buy back 4 million of the company's shares. Unfortunately, this didn't seem like it was going to be enough. But just one week before Vivendi's shares would gain double voting rights and push their ownership of the company over 30%, the company put out their quarterly results in November of 2017 and announced that they had no plans to acquire Ubisoft for the next six months and that it would not exceed the threshold of 30% through the doubling of its voting rights. This was a huge win for the Gimo brothers and for Ubisoft. The company would keep its independence. By March of 2018, Ubisoft and Vivendi struck a deal ending any potential takeover. Vivendi agreed to sell all 30 million of its shares to other parties and to not buy any more shares of Ubisoft for five years. It should be noted that a lot of these shares went to the Chinese tech giant Tencent, who footed a large part of the buyback of the shares, and now owns a 5% stake in Ubisoft. If you're not familiar with who Tencent is, they own Riot Games, Supercell, 5% of Activision Blizzard, and just under 50% of Epic Games. Point of the story is, Tencent is huge. And this partnership with them also allows Ubisoft to start marketing their games in China, which is by far the largest video games market in the world, now containing more gamers than the United States even has citizens. But let's take a step back from just talking numbers. How did Ubisoft completely turn it around? A 
analysts were saying it was just a matter of time that Ubisoft had no chance of escaping Vivendi's clutches. How did they do it? Well, apart from the strategic business partnerships that I mentioned before, they completely transformed their image as a company. At E3 2016, a time when it looked like it would be Ubisoft's last year as an independent company, Yves Guillemot came on the stage and brought a ton of developers up and thanked the fans. I would like also to thank you all the gamers. We are only here because of you. We really love you guys. Reiterating the phrase, we are Ubisoft. Promoting the idea that Ubisoft was an industry underdog who takes creative and adventurous risks fighting off the bland and corporate nature of Vivendi. While this isn't exactly true for Ubisoft, it definitely pulled on a lot of people's heartstrings. Alongside this, Ubisoft started doing right by the fans, being more consumer friendly and developing a ton of great games, like Watch Dogs 2. While critically underplayed, this was a huge step in the right direction from the bungled first game in the series. Next came a surprising and brilliant partnership with Nintendo on Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, made even more endearing by Shigeru Miyamoto himself coming on stage. So it's... Take a picture. <laughs> and the creative director of the game crying on camera from Miyamoto's praise. Also, the aforementioned constant support and updates for games like Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor after many requests from the fans. Ubisoft also launched the first Division game, which instantly became a hit. Just one week after the game's release, it became Ubisoft's highest selling game of all time, made even more impressive since it was a totally new IP. And finally, taking a break from the Assassin's Creed franchise paid off huge. Assassin's Creed Origins, and specifically Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which was rightfully featured on many people's shortlist for their game of the year in 2018 and they've seemingly continued doing the right thing even after they've successfully fended off Vivendi's of takeover. Just this year, they gave away copies of Assassin's Creed Unity so people could see Notre Dame, which had a large team of developers take two years to faithfully recreate the historic cathedral. Also, The Division 2 has received extremely positive reviews, especially in light of Anthem releasing just before it. And Watch Dogs Legion, which sounded like the last thing I would ever want, actually had a pretty good showing at E3 2019. Now I'm not saying Ubisoft doesn't have the normal trappings of a large corporation, they absolutely do. But they found a way to make boatloads of cash while still making great games and keeping their consumers happy. It's just wild to me that five years ago they were considered on the same level as EA, which has been a meme for years to dogpile hate on. Personally, I really like Ubisoft's current direction, and I hope they keep to it. They have a lot of great franchises that consistently put up good review numbers. Even Far Cry 5, while it reviewed as only okay, was one of the highest selling games of 2018. They have an extremely likable head in Yves Guillemot and seem to actually be listening to feedback from the fans. Ubisoft isn't the multi-billion dollar company the video games industry deserves, but it is the one the video game industry needs. Because we have to chase him. Okay, we're going in! Go, go! Move! <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed at all what you saw here today, please consider subscribing to the channel. It means a heck of a lot. Uh, this video is a lot of work. I actually restarted it three separate times because I wasn't happy with how it's coming out. 
or how it was coming out. If I sound different, actually, it's because I got a brand new microphone as a gift to myself for finishing this video. Also, if you were interested in talking about video game news or topics similar to what was in this video, um, I also do a weekly talk show called Around the Monitor. It goes live on Twitch every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Basically, it's very similar to ESPN's Around the Horn, where we talk about the week's news, and whoever makes the most points in the discussion gets actual points towards winning that week. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We do it every week. Please consider checking that out as well. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for now. Like I said, I'm King Kaiser. This has been Around the Monitor. Thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful day.